All right, so a uh, question arised on how do I determine how big to make the combustion chamber in the head. So I'm gonna go over this kind of quick, short video. I don't want it real long. Um, I don't have everything that I need here to do it, but I'll give you how to do it, all right? I got the saw that I'm working on. I got a almost stock top end on it. It's had some work done to it, but it's almost stock. I got the cylinder that I'm using. I got my head. I've got some oil, two cycle oil. I've got a syringe. I've got some clay. I've got a two inch uh, dial depth gauge. I've got a piston stop. I've got a high quality snap on. Um, compression tester and my the degree wheel so I need to know uh, the degrees so I need to know top dead center so I'm gonna I would put my uh, piston stop in and I would determine top dead center I would put my degree wheel on I would set my pointer to zero um, and I would measure my exhaust duration or I would measure uh, my top dead center to exhaust port opening to where it just starts to open uh, from top dead center so let's say we got a, a, a exhaust duration of 160 degrees um, we subtract that 160 degrees from 360 degrees we end up with 200 degrees uh, we take half of that is the stroke of the of the cylinder going up and the stroke coming back down. It's the degrees that the exhaust port is closed. So we take half of that would be 100 degrees, and we keep that in our file. Um, we then um, <clears throat> take a compression test of the saw, see where we're at. Um, let's let's just say we're at 175 pounds and we want to go to 200 pounds um, so we're at 175 we want to get it a little higher so I'll take some clay and I'll stick it in the exhaust port in on top of the piston and smear it in there so it's in kind of the center of the piston so it's not in the squish band um, and it's flattened out enough to where it's not going to hit anything else um, a cc of it or whatever and I will um, do another compression test and I'll do this until I get my desired compression put some in take some out whatever it takes to get my desired compression using clay okay now once I've determined I've got my compression where I want it uh, I turn up my my crank up to top dead center piston at top dead center and I will fill uh, to the spark plug hole I will fill it with oil I will level the spark plug hole so I don't get any air trapped in there and I will measure through with a syringe how much oil is in the chamber now I'll probably roll that back about, I don't know, so it goes down a quarter of an inch maybe. I don't want to tra trap any air in the squish band. So I will start off with about 5 cc's of oil in, in there uh, with, the, with it not at top dead center so that I get it all around and then I'll turn it up to top dead center so that I don't have any air trapped in the squish band. The oil doesn't trap any air. Fill it up to the bottom of the spark plug hole. Um, and measure how many, and this is wrong, this is milliliters, but measure how many cc's it takes to do that. This, you could use a milliliter. You can convert milliliters to cc's or ounces to cc's or anything you want to use. Um, so now I've, now I've got that. I know, I know what my duration is. I know how many cc's the head is. Okay, um, so now I take that cylinder all off, put this cylinder on it, 
because it's easier to work with. Okay, now I still can find top dead center. I can do it with this, right? This goes down to zero, you know, flat. So I can find top dead center and I can run my stroke in here for uh, how far it is from top dead center to port opening. But I'm gonna go back to what this cylinder is to find out wh what 100 degrees from top dead center down is, how much distance that is. Okay, and I can do it on this cylinder with the degree wheel from what that other cylinder told me it was. All right, between the, the volume of the head from the oil, how much oil we put in the combustion chamber of this cylinder, and how much stroke that we found here, that would be the same stroke as what this cylinder is, we can determine a trapped compression ratio. Um, so that's what I want to duplicate. So now I take this cylinder, that it's, I'm all done with it, and it's got a much longer exhaust duration or a shorter top dead center to opening. So I measure that on this one then to see what that's at. And then I calculate whatever uh, combustion chamber I need to put into this head size I need to put in this head to get the same trapped compression ratio that I just figured out in this cylinder to get my desired compression ratio. Now did you get all of that? Watch this three, four, five times whatever you got to do and maybe you'll catch on. Now to measure this uh, combustion chamber on the lathe, this would be in the lathe, I need a piece of plexiglass to lay over the top of this. I don't have a piece, but a piece, I'm just going to show you this piece of tin. So I would put this, this would be in the lathe, I would put this over the top and I would have a hole here and here, bottom of, of the um, combustion chamber and a hole at the top of the combustion chamber, small hole, right? And I would take the oil in my syringe again, oil in a syringe, and I would force it in the bottom hole. I would hold the plexiglass up tight, probably using my tailstock and some something to hold it up there, okay? Maybe put a little oil around it to seal it. And then I would squirt the oil in the bottom hole, and it will fill in the top hole, I'll let the air out, no trapped air, until it's full and I can measure the cc's again and know how big my um, combustion chamber is. Now I shouldn't have put this hole in here so that's going to screw me up but I can just fill that with that clay fill that hole right there with that clay so I don't have to deal with that and I can always take that clay back out once I'm done. So that's how we figure that out. Um, and it's trapped compression ratio. You, if you're just going to do bore and stroke and, and do your compression ratio off of that, you're going to have a false compression ratio uh, a reading. Your, your, your pressure, compression ratio is not going to be correct. So most chainsaws are stock. 7 to 8 to 1 compression ratio. I don't think I've ever seen one higher than 8. And uh, I would like to have nine. And this is trapped, not total compression, but trapped. So um, I, I can go up to nine pretty easy. But chances are the crankshaft itself can't, can't handle uh, high compression ratios. Um, so I don't think we, we don't have to get into funny fuel unless you're over about nine to one, nine and a half to one. Then you have to start thinking about fuel. But... Um, all my saws I built under that, and um, that's probably where I'll stay. But you can figure out your dynamic, your your 
your static compression on that if that's the, how you want to deal with it and you know I'd say well I want 200 pounds of static compression on the saw well, that's a number that I picked and chose or 220 or 180 or whatever you choose then this is the way you can go about it it's the way I go about it uh, I go with what I want for static compression compare that to what the trapped compression ratio is and I'll see if I want to stick with it if it's higher than 9 to 1 I will probably stick to something under or not no, no higher than 9 to 1 just for fuel reasons um, hope that explains it thanks bye